And welcome back to Off the Press. Uh, this is uh, twice a week show we do, looking at uh, local government, local issues, and this year, of course, local elections. I'm Theo Douglas. I cover city government for the Bakersfield, Californian and TBC Media. And uh, this afternoon, we are talking with uh, longtime councilman and vice mayor, Harold Hansen, who represents Ward 5 over there in the uh, far southwest of Bakersfield. Um, joining him, um, one of his former colleagues, that's uh, Russell Johnson, former uh, Ward 7 representative on uh, Bakersfield City Council, uh, currently a uh, local consultant. And uh, to Russell's left, we have uh, Nicole Parra, adjunct uh, professor in poli sci over at Cal State Bakersfield and herself a former assemblywoman. And uh, before the break, uh, we were uh, just uh, hearing from uh, the vice mayor uh, all about uh, you know his, uh, his time in uh, banking, his life, just a variety of uh, you know, different uh, topics. He's had a long career. He's been on the council for four terms. That's four four-year terms, and he's uh, currently seeking a, a fifth term for a lot of reasons. Everything from, uh, you know, uh, concern wanting to continue to shepherd uh, Bakersfield's nearly four hundred sixty-one point five million dollar budget through some uh, interesting economic times, thanks to the uh, oil industry, um, to, uh, you know, ongoing uh, concern for uh, public safety. Uh, you know, we have some water issues. You may have heard uh, there's been a drought in California. Mm -hmm. uh, just, a, just a lot of things going on. So, so Harold, I'm going to ask, you know, I had the privilege of serving with you, and I also had the privilege of serving with one of your opponents on the Planning Commission. So, but tell me, um, uh, that's uh, Jeff Tack, uh, tell me about one of your greatest accomplishments that you feel like you were able to do the most on at the city council. You know, no single accomplishment. When I when I say that, meaning, as you folks get realize, uh, and you don't really realize until you get there, is uh, you think you can go on the council, you think you can go into the assembly, and you can make dramatic moves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, in the council, you got to have four votes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you learn that real quick. Got to count I mean, four. Marcel Valjean reminded me that the first meeting, he said, Harold, remember, one, two, three, four. <laughs> but I think my greatest accomplishment is my consistency, mm -hmm. okay? I'm consistent as far as money being, not frugal, but just paying attention to it, you know, Alan, we're not spending too much money over here. Is that the right way? Is that the right place to put it? Mm -hmm. You know, do we do we need to put twenty million dollars in roads, or should it be fifteen? Should we have the other five into into parks or whatever? But so that that area, I've, I've been very consistent. I've been very consistent in um, dealing with uh, public safety, with supporting the police and fire. Uh, so I, I think that I, I think I the other thing I think I'm pretty good at is trying to keep the council together. You know, it's pretty interesting. I don't know, if, Nicole, if you had mm -hmm. situations in Sacramento and Russell, you, I, you and I could speak for the council. But mm -hmm. when I first got on the council, I thought it no, it would not be a good old boy club or a good old boy and girl club. But I I really expected personal relationship mm -hmm. because every job I've ever had in my life, you know, there's always two or three or four people you mm -hmm. kind of bond with. Yeah. Uh, it really hasn't worked that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, th I don't think it's anything to do with uh, uh, people not liking each other, but we just, we're all busy. We have our own ways and mm -hmm. we have families and we have jobs because it's a big deal. You know, it, yeah, it is. You got to have a full time job. It only pays a hundred dollars a month. It's a, it's a, it, mm -hmm. so you you've got to do all these other things. Russell, you've got a small child that, you know, you simply adore and you spend a lot of time with now, and that's probably one of the reasons you're not in public service that much. <laughs> well, I can tell you, if I was on the council today, the amount of time I was spending with my son would be diminished, and I would not like that. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, you know, Harold. One thing I always talked about uh, when I explained to people what I, we did as city council is I would easily spend 20 hours a week. You said you're spending right now 20 to 25 hours a week as vice mayor. And I think anyone that runs for city council and anyone that is pr privileged enough to be voted into council, it, you have to be so dedicated because the amount of time you spent, each one of those people out there has a heart for the community. You may disagree on issues, 
you may all be real busy leading your own lives, but you're absolutely right. Each person there has a heart for the community. Russell, thanks for reminding me of that point. I think there's something that happens to all of us. I don't know if it does at the state level, mm -hmm. at the county level. Uh, Nicole, mm -hmm. you can address this right. after I finish my statement, but there's an awful lot of pride that, that takes place. Mm -hmm. You know, I may not always agree with, with, with Terry Maxwell, but I know Terry has his heart in the right place. Uh, for him, his heart in the right place, and he's doing what he considers to be the right thing to do. I know when Russell did what he did, mm -hmm. he had his mind in the right place. And I know that I absolutely, uh, I mean, I, I'm gonna make a confession, okay? Okay. I have not always, in my lifetime, mm -hmm. performed up to my ability, mm -hmm. the ability that God gave me. But I'll tell you one thing, when it came to, comes to the city council, I have, I don't know what it is, it's like something came over me <laughs> and <laughs> splashed some holy water on me or whatever happened, mm -hmm. But I am devoted and have been devoted to that job as city councilman. I, I absolutely adore it. Um, it's, it'll be tough the day I leave, but, I, but I'll leave with a smile on my face and with no regrets. Uh, but, but, Russell, you're absolutely right. I would hope no one would come into this thing with the idea that you're going to skate through it because that's not fair. So. I just wanted to say, I just hear the passion that you have, Harold, and you really enjoy it. And it's so refreshing uh, to see people who still have the, the passion to serve. I know that all of us here, we're in the community because we enjoy what we're doing. We enjoy working with others. And you asked me a question about uh, that at the state level. Uh, we were always, as a Central Valley delegation, Republican or Democrats, we were always trying to keep together because we were fighting the urban areas like Los Angeles and San Francisco. So it was incumbent upon us to work together. And because it was our full-time job, we were able to bond, whether we were traveling up the 99, going to the same town halls, and really fighting for survival issues, which sometimes other people from outside our community didn't understand. And so I, um, I'm sitting here listening to you. I told you during the break that you're the best storyteller, but you're also very passionate about about the work you're doing on behalf of your constituents. And so I think the listeners are getting that. And I appreciate your, and you also your honesty in saying this is my last term. You know, I want to serve four years and then be able to, you know, pass the baton, but on my terms, because I'm still ready. And I applaud you for that. Yeah, and, 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 and believe me, if I didn't think that I was mentally and physically prepared for the job, I mm -hmm. would be stepping aside right now. I, I would not even do so. And Nicole, let me pat you on the back a little bit. You, you made a good point that sometimes we forget the Valley people, um, whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, whether you're Libertarian, you know, we don't have any Libertarians, but um, mm -hmm. you guys just have to mm -hmm. you know, hold hands and literally live together because if you don't, we're done for. Right. So Harold, you brought up holy water. And I'm going to switch gears to some issues at the city, and namely, I'm going to go to water. And you know, when you and I were on the water board together, um, you, which you've chaired for a number of years now, um, we dealt with the issue of running water down the river. We had the EIR to make that a project. And then when I got off, you guys did something I was kind of surprised about because you were able to get, I believe it was Kern Delta, and uh, uh, some of the other urban water districts to jump on board and form a, a, a local groundwater management authority. Give us your, your take on how that got done and how important you think the groundwater management authority the city's putting together with those partners is, is, is in the future. This is absolutely critical to the city of Bakersfield, to the county of Kern. Uh, first of all, let me go back to your question on the getting together. Um, I give full credit to Jenny Gennaro and, and Steve Tellia, uh, among others, and Alan Tandy, but, but mm -hmm. I mean, those two folks were able to get together with G. Buck Murray, some of the other folks with Kern Delta, and sit down over months and months and months, and I'd like to think I had a little something to do with it, mm -hmm. but we had to build a trust. The trouble with water is that if we gave everybody shotguns, we'd have been shooting at each other. Mm -hmm. And it, would, it, it went on, as Russell, you know, this went on for years. I mean, 
tens of years. Isn't it bizarre? It's almost like the way they talk is they file lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly. Bizarre. Wow. So somehow that, you know, we, we, we worked at, at this thing, and we finally got that together. And what's really interesting, and Lois Henry owes me on this one, <laughs> is that she bet me we could never do ID4. We could never get, get them in that group. Mm -hmm. And that fell into place. So now we have this group coming together, and we have one obstacle. Well, we have a lot of obstacles, but a major obstacle now is to get work with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're really, really close to that one as well, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not giving away any secrets. <laughs> we're going back and forth. It's been some, not negotiations, some good good talk between both of us. And I think that we're going to have a good results there. If, as I mentioned earlier, or maybe it was before we got on the air, mm -hmm. uh, this GSA, w it, which is a very complicated deal, and I won't go into it, uh, but... If we don't do it right, the state of California is going to come in mm -hmm. and take control of our water. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Mm -hmm. okay. You might want to explain GSA, Groundwater Sustainability Act, for the listeners, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, and the great Groundwater uh, Sustainability, Sustainability Act is the act is to get your group together mm -hmm. and file and do mm -hmm. all the paperwork and, have, and nobody has to get on top of the other one or into yeah, the I other area. I want to say it's 2017 to actually form the agency, but then uh, I believe agencies then, once they're formed, have until the year 2020 mm -hmm. to, I, I think, have their plans submitted mm -hmm. and uh, be ready to start doing and this is important anything with those plans. Th because oh, groundwater has not been monitored hasn't in such a way. hasn't been monitored right, in this degree before. And uh, two, uh, just... You know, I, I think geologically with yeah. groundwater, it's it's not easy to manage it to replace mm -hmm. it in any case. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, monitoring it is a very important uh, issue. Particularly right now, we're in our what fifth year of drought. Still, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, got a little bit of a respite last winter, but we're still in a drought, folks. So, well, David Couch and I met probably two to three years ago, uh, and I believe there were twenty-one mm -hmm. associations, city, county. Uh, mm -hmm. Water agency. Easy number to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, that we talked about, could we put them all together? And I looked at David and said, there's no way on earth mm -hmm. we can get two people together. How are we going to do 21? Uh, so, but we've got like three or four right now. We're going to get the county. I'm positive. And we've got others that are talking to us as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I think what's happened is these agencies have finally come to the conclusion, along with the city, along with the county, we better get along, guys, because if we don't, mm -hmm. we lose power. Do you think it helps that you have former city council members on the board of supervisors that have some relationship with the city, understand, or what are your impressions? Oh, boy, I love that question. <laughs> I, I really do. Because uh, we get into deals, not deals, but uh, discussions with the county from time to time. Annexations. And is very <laughs> yeah. aware of, uh, say tax of the uh, tax <laughs> split uh, situation. Right. And... Uh, uh, it took us a long time, but that one, uh, you know, we got Zach Scribner, mm -hmm. Mike Manger, right. David Couch, right. mm -hmm. and we sit around and go, gee, we should have three votes, but we're not getting any. <laughs> 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 and and we talked to, you know, we talked to each of these folks, uh, and, you know, they're supportive of us. We're trying to be supportive of them, mm -hmm. but everybody has their turf, and mm -hmm. you have to understand that. Yeah. So, Harold... Um, Let's talk about public safety a little bit. You've always said, you know, you've been supportive of public safety. Uh, I know when I was on the council, you voted with me when we were able to get 10 additional officers added to the city budget. Um, tell us, what do you think the predicament is now? You've got Prop 47, AB 109. What is the solution to address the rising property crime theft that we have in the city? You know, that's probably the greatest uh, challenge that we face You know, we talk among ourselves, uh, and, w and I know for myself and for others on the council that we meet w with the chief, with the rank and file, and we say, what can we do? What do we need to add people? Uh, what areas do we have to go into? Uh, what support must we give you? And then we come up with, where are we going to get the money? Exactly. And as you know, in the last week or so, we found out that we took another negative 9% hit mm -hmm. on the sales tax. Mm -hmm. So 
I think our greatest opportunity is to redistribute the staff, and we've done that somewhat, that we have a, uh, a station or a facility out in Ward 1 now, and I know we have one in the southwest, but I think we have to look at moving our, our police officers into areas that need to be better patrolled. Uh, sometimes I don't think it's a problem as with the law enforcement people as it is with our judges and with the laws of the state of California because so often that, uh, that uh, the criminal, unfortunately, is, uh, gets away, or not gets away, but gets away lightly as far as the terms, this type of thing. We have a gang problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, it, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I'm sure we had a gang problem, mm -hmm. but it didn't seem like much, but now it's, it's expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember, and I gotta go back a little bit on this one, uh, when I was in Palmdale, Lancaster back in the 70s, uh, which was a small area at that time, that there was not an issue that all of a sudden in the 80s, that area opened up to Los Angeles groups that came up and did all kinds of damage, and I believe it's still hurting that area. That's what concerns me, people coming from outside the area. I talked to an educator the other day. Russell, was that your, oh, your, okay. your, your program the other night? And he said, Harold, what, what can you do? I said, well, first of all, we all know that it needs to start at the home, mm -hmm. okay? And then it needs to start in the classroom. And then, it, you know, that respect needs to go further. I offered my services to go talk to people, talk to the kids, talk to the parents. I think, I think we've got to go beyond the kids at this point and go try to get to do something with the parents. Do you know what's pretty interesting, Russell? The last few weeks, I try to go out to the uh, these meetings on the uh, oh I'm sorry something about my, uh, the uh, uh, the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control Board no no no, no the uh, walk the walk-ins yeah oh. on the, uh, the gang the get together yeah. oh yeah the gang call-outs thank yeah. you absolutely and there's 50 60 70 and 80 people showing up mm -hmm. at these meetings now mm -hmm. with the police talking to them and say what can we do to protect our neighborhood. And you know, there's a lot of things that the civilian can put in place and follow and help their other people in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll give an example. I got a, my ward about a month ago, I went out and talked to a group of people and they're in a gated community. Most of them senior citizens. Mm -hmm. And they said they had a couple of crimes. And I said, well, so what happened? Uh, what did the police say? We didn't report it. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to report that stuff. Yep. So now, you know, I had the police department go out there and discuss it with them, which I'd like to go along with them as well. And we have that relationship going. We're able to patrol a little better. Uh, as Russell knows, and Nicole, you would too, if you ask people to do something, I need your help, mm -hmm. it's amazing the results mm -hmm. you get. And another mm -hmm. issue is that uh, with the early release of some of the folks that we have to do at the state level and federal level with reimbursement, but also a better job at rehabilitation. We have to do something to help people to either, if they're coming out, and they are, most people think people are you know, sent to prison, they're gonna stay, but they're coming out, is how do we make sure that we have the resources to help them transition um, to a better life, whether it's through, um, you, know, uh, you know, and we see addiction you know, with drugs, and then when you talk about the families, it's not mom and dad at home in some of our communities that you know. When you knock on doors, especially uh, uh, in certain areas, it's grandma and grandpa who are taking care of their grandchildren. And, you know, part of, of, I think, what we see in the nation is we've got to get back some hope, you know, hope back into the families. we got to, to give them the resources and the tools and, you know, and help diversify our economy to be able to provide those jobs in the career tech fields. It's so important. Not every student and not every child is going to go to a four-year university and they drop out. And we're seeing that here in Kern County. We need to improve our 
here I am. I'm not running for office. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's that, fine. You know, yeah. those, it's, it, it does take a village. It does take a lot of resources to move a, a, a community up. And, you know, gated communities anymore, it's not, that's not going to keep crime out. It's about being aware. It's mm -hmm. about helping our community, uh, being engaged, like our elected officials, our nonprofits, and really saying, what can we do as a community to help everyone? Because if we stay in our own silos, this is, and more people are released and more programs and more, um, more unemployment, we're not going to get in a better place. You know, you reminded me of something, and you're right on. Uh, there's some of these guys coming out of these prisons that are bad guys, and they're not going to change. We're stuck with it. Right. Right. Excuse me. But mm -hmm. there are people that really would like to turn their life around. Mm -hmm. Just a small thing that we're doing at the city of Bakersfield by hiring the homeless people right. to help clean up the highways. I'm told, I talked to some of these guys, they're so happy to be making $10, $11 an hour, mm -hmm. but they have pride, and, they, mm -hmm. and some of them have even been able to transition mm -hmm. to go to work for the mm -hmm. city of Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. That hope, right? The pride. A absolutely. Or two and other companies throughout the city, yeah. We need to provide. You know what? <clears throat> I'll get in my soapbox now. Uh, I wish I were... Um, I wish I were uh, the head of a 5,000-person uh, a company, and I'll tell you why. Because we need to give some of these folks an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a quick Wells Fargo story. I made me think of it. When I, when I was working for Wells, I was asked to go to an, uh, speak to an economics class in Rubido, California, and it was probably 85% uh, Hispanic, 10% a black, 5% white. And these kids, first day I walked in there and they thought, and I was quite a bit younger than I am now, uh, and they looked at me and they thought, oh boy. <laughs> and I thought, how do I get to these kids? Um, so I thought, well, let's make it interesting. So we did some Disney stuff and we did some other things. But the key was, and I don't want to know what made me think of this, but I said to them, I, I, I looked at the class one day and I said, who would like to work in a bank? Mm -hmm. And here's these kids. Wow. Uh, most of them were from broken homes. Mm -hmm. And they looked at me like, how could I ever work in a bank? I said, I'll tell you what. You guys vote at the end of this sem uh, semester and tell me who your most popular person is, and I'll hire you. But see, I had the power to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, it was only one person. Right. But you know what? I couldn't believe how thrilled they were, wow. and I'll tell you what, I never had a problem getting their attention. Opportunity. Well, and that's, yep. industry needs to Makes a that. difference. Mm -hmm. Are we at a break? We are, actually. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'll be back. Right. Yeah. We're not done. Absolutely right. Opportunity, <laughs> right? Investment. But you know, we have a new, there's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yep, there really are. All right, well, we'll uh, <laughs> be back here in a little bit, and uh, we'll hear more from uh, Vice Mayor Harold Hansen, a councilman from the Southwest here in Bakersfield, running for his uh, fifth term. And uh, thanks for watching Off the Press. <laughs>